there's the boss. Alright, hello there everybody. Let me just put this down. There we go. And let's put this down right there. Alright. Hello there everybody, welcome back. I'm the Missing Sock. Welcome back from more Grand Theft Auto Online. So here we are at our uh, car warehouse. Near LSI West. I got grooving on. So my guy's still grooving. He's got the groove on from getting our new DJ at Studio Los Santos. <laughs> yeah, so here's a car that I picked up. And uh, we're going to do some laid back grinding. So I think I got some stuff ready, but I'm not really sure. So we're going to have to go around and check it. Because I'm not really sure. I helped out some friends. I got our DJ. You know, I did some other things. And we could use some more money before we buy our terabyte. So I was going to buy our terabyte. But uh, maybe we'll build up a little bit of money first. Yeah. So, um, more often than not, this is my, my car to steal right now, the CEO car. And uh, I picked the 811s for now, using our top range only method. But anyway, I brought it over here, and uh, it says steal the 811, as you guys can see down there at the bottom there, right at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> oh, I can't point down. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so it usually stays like that. Normally it says bring it into the warehouse. So, I'm thinking that uh, this kind of proves that the Cargo Bob can pick up the bomb missions. So some of these cars do have bombs, as many of you guys know, but a lot of times you can uh, you can drive carefully, just drive at a certain speed limit, and even when you go under the speed limit, it's still okay as long as you get back up to that speed limit um, in no time. I'd recommend as soon as you hear the beep beeping of the bomb to quickly press your button and hit the GPS, and uh, that way you've got a locked in GPS to know where you're going, because a lot of times it, it disappears. You know, the GPS doesn't tell you where to go. And sure, you can keep yourself up to speed, but you might be traveling the wrong direction away from your stuff unless you know where you're going. Okay, so let's see if we can confirm this. So I carried this away from a house, and uh, I've long suspected that along the bomb missions could be picked up by Cargo Bob, and you could avoid the whole bomb altogether. But a lot of those missions, you can avoid it. You can't use the Cargo Bob because they're inside a, a garage or something like that. So this one was actually parked in front of a house. So this is a good little test to find out, can the cargo bob bring in the bomb missions or not? So we should be setting off a bomb when I go in here. Let's find out. Yep. <laughs> so there you go. Confirmation that you can avoid it with the cargo bob if you're lucky enough to be able to pick it up. Oh, and bomb activation is going to go off. Let's set our GPS. See, we do have time, as long as you're not in a trapped area. It's not even going to go off, it's actually activation. So there's detonation sequence, but now it's set off. So as you guys could see, I wasn't even up to speed as the bomb sequence got off. And I can keep playing with that speed too. Oh, that did damage. I was looking at the bar with you guys. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, you can kind of play with that bar. And usually I drive these missions no problem, you know, N you know with no damage at all. But when somebody's watching, that's when you'll mess up. <laughs> As you guys can see, you don't have to rip around. This 811 could go way faster than this. But then you're more likely to cause damage. Unless you need to be in a hurry. I usually hurry on my way here, and then usually by the time I get close to my car warehouse, it's, uh, it's all fine again. It's deactivated, and I can take it right inside. So we're about halfway done. I think we'll sell it right away. So this was a totally an unnecessary mission, but it proves what I was wondering. And I always thought and always said that the Cargo Bob is getting rid of the bomb missions. But I can never really be sure until I found uh, one I could test it with like that. So now I know for sure. Woohoo. Do you like playing with the 811s? A lot of good cars. I'd probably save it for an upcoming mission. 
or an upcoming episode of some sort, maybe a top list of things I could change, but it's worthy of mentioning now, you know, I think they should let us do like um, uh, um, racing for pink slips, you know, pink slip racing. And uh, I think, you know, a lot of the problem with why there is no pink slip racing, it's a classic kind of racing, it's racing for the car, right? And I think the main reason why there is no pink slip racing is because people would obviously complain. Nobody wants to lose their car, right? Um, you know, a lot of people would be upset about that. So I think Rockstar just avoids the whole thing altogether. But in the CEO car warehouse, you've got these cars and they're not really yours exactly. They're more like money and you could easily uh, get more of them. So, you know, I think these would be, you know, it'd be a good candidate to use these cars from your car warehouse as uh, pink slip racers. You know, and you'd be ra another way to get your CEO cars would be to race for them. Yeah, I think that'd be kind of fun. Another way of getting it. And uh, nobody's personal vehicles are being put at risk for them to complain about. All right. So, in it goes. Let's see if we're ready. Should be. Log in. We down here. So as we've said before, we do the top range only. Some of you guys who haven't seen that might want to watch that episode if you want to know how to do that. You know, in short, you can have 10 standard, I think it is, 10 medium range, and uh, 12 top range of all the different vehicles. And then it starts giving you the, the same card that you last sold. Now that said, I find that way messes up, say, 1 in 20, 1 in 30 times. But the way I found never has messed up on me once is to do the collection method. So it's more or less the same thing, keeping all the collection cards, all the collection license plates. Yep. And uh, you can do this on the way up, so you can do the other way, 10 cars, 10 cars, and 12 cars. But uh, keep the collection cars as you go along and get rid of the others. And I found ever since I kept the collections, whenever I get rid of these, it gives me another of that same car again, and it's never let me down once, to this day. Yeah, so... Uh, I don't want to be in this green though. There. Because we're not doing a collection thing today. Export. Export. Specialist dealer. For 100,000, which is actually 80,000 in profit. Minus any damage you might have caused. Yellow and black. Shoot. No one's looking for that plate. Okay. Uh, what do we give it today? I was playing with the silvers there the other day for our. For our Cadillac, the Revolter there. I feel like something else today. Maybe we'll try the Maple Brown? No, Felter Brown? Yeah, let's try that Felter Brown. Definitely need to change that uh, pearlescence. In a moment. We'll get there. I was going to change this to a Felter Brown too, but I think I might actually use the black on that. Yeah, it's a good place to play with paint jobs, see how they look. Different cars have a different effect on those paint jobs, though, so sometimes something that looks good on one car doesn't look good on another. But nonetheless, you can get some good inspiration for stuff to do on your other cars and try out funky things. That's very funky. I don't know if I like that, but, <laughs> but it's very funky. Let's see, that's bright. Let's try the yellow. It almost gives it a gold shine. Sure, we'll take it. All right, and yeah, do away those neon lights. Wouldn't recognize it. Yeah, do some carbon inferno. All right, everybody, here we go. Wait for it to load. <laughs> one of the things about GD Online is load screens. <laughs> okay, after what we put into this one, we don't want it to go wrong. Take the car to the sale, and if another crew comes after it, do everything you can to stop them. All right, so as we've said before, it's a good idea to let her talk. You know, you've heard it a hundred times before, perhaps, but she does actually give you um, um, extra five seconds or so on the timer for those that count, for those that uh, worry about that kind of stuff. We're all by ourselves still, so that's good. Yeah. 
Up, up, and away. That paint job doesn't actually look too bad. It's kind of golden. Bronzy gold. Yeah. Alright, so I cargo bomb, my cargo sells, my car sourcing and sells. Both in the warehouse. And um and out, as you guys can see right now. It saves time. The cargo mob eventually pays for itself that way. By saving time so you can make money in other places. It also saves uh, money on damage. As you guys can see, those guys are spawning way down there, but they can't hit me up here. Usually you can even spawn, uh, you can even uh, fly higher. And then they won't, uh, they won't spawn at all. Yeah. After a while you start to get to know the, uh, the places and where you're going. And right now I think that we're going to be going to Devon Weston's house. So it's in between those two mountains ahead of us, two hills. Right in between them. We're going to go through that valley. And uh, there'll be a house on the other side. And that's where we're bringing this. We get a little more altitude. So you can be risky, like I kind of am. I'm kind of moving it along, but you can wait and get more height. Depends on how much of a rush you feel like you're in, or how much risk you think it is, going high or going low. The cargo bob can go faster than people think when you lean it full forward, but you lose a lot of your altitude very fast. It's almost better to kind of gently bob it along, you know, full, kind of half forward, and then let it uh, get some altitude back, and then forward again. The enemies don't spawn if they're if you're off road. So over this hill like this, they generally don't spawn very much. If I flew over that road, they might show up. Now right here, they like to spawn on this road right underneath because I'm coming in at a low low uh, a low height. But that said, I've never had them give me any problems. Usually, they despawn as soon as you come into this area, the cell area. It's almost like these areas, like we talked about before, have like invisible. Um, Coronas, visible circles that you can't see, just like the other missions, but these ones are invisible. And like that, as soon as you bring it into that circle, which you can't see, it takes over and lands it for you. Very cool. Very loud helicopter, though. <laughs> All right. Hundred thousand dollars. Eighty thousand profit. Minus our damage. Can't do that for another 20 minutes. So let's go check in on something else. Ooh, we're over here by our bunker. Let's go that way. Just because it's right over here. Yeah. Now, whether or not um, my bunker's ready or not, I don't know. But we'll find out. something tougher, but we're going to do maybe a cell. Through to your right. garage. You uh, need me to bring you a ride? Oh, uh, yeah. Yes, yeah, so do you. Uh, I'll sure, bring it bring by. It older. Okay, I don't think we're really going to need that because we're going to have the cell missions. I just like to have a vehicle out. Oh, well it's done gone. Out there. The oh, money's in the yeah. bank. Right on. That was delayed. <laughs> Usually she calls you right after you drop off the car. Alright, and there's a car. Maybe we'll grab it and put it in. Yeah, I was going to say that uh, you don't really need them for the cell missions, but at the same time, it's good to have a vehicle out and ready. That way, uh, it'll kind of follow you around sometimes when you reload in different places. The vehicle will be nearby in case you need it. Usually it's better to have something more weaponized. <laughs> But, you know, whatever you want. In we go. Yeah, another good reason why it's uh, good to have a vehicle already out. So e what I mean by that is even if you don't need the vehicle, just get in the habit of kind of walking in, loading up, and, and spawning a vehicle. And that way, How you, doing? you can use that, um, that uh, menu. Let me hop out here. The interactive menu to bring in your vehicle anytime you need to. So you go to vehicles and request personal vehicle. And it's basically the exact same thing as calling your mechanic 
except it brings in the last vehicle that you used. And it's much faster than the mechanic, and it has a tendency to spawn the vehicle closer to you. Not always, but it has a tendency to be better than the mechanic in a few different ways and faster. So, good idea to always have a vehicle ready. You know, even when you don't need it. Even when you're helping friends. You know, if you got that second while you're waiting or whatever, if they're setting up stuff, just spawn in a vehicle. And you never know. Every now and again, it's really good and handy that you had it there. All right, so ours, our uh, our uh, bunker here is ready to go. 147,000. All done. And we're going to get more than that in the city. But that's minus our cost, too, of 75,000. Now, as you guys can see, that should be 140,000. But for some reason, I got 147. Can I have some coffee? I've had that a lot lately for the last month since after hours. I've had a whole bunch of sales that were different amounts than they should be. Now, every time I got more, so I'm not really complaining, but I've seen 147 many times. I've seen 154 many times. But uh, the way I do it, it's always the exact same as people who have been watching the show for a while know. Um, at least for a while lately, just to be lazy. You guys can maybe do it better or more fine-tuned for more profit, but I've got all the other businesses, so I tend to just kind of look for the easy way to drop in, get it done, move on to the next one. You know, same thing, move on to the next one, same thing, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, part of the reason why I think it's good to buy supplies and all that kind of stuff. There's nothing wrong with doing the missions if you don't have any other businesses and you're an up-and-coming uh, player. But once you have other things to do, usually that's better profit. And sometimes some people argue, and I kind of agree that you're better off to do head under and sights here sometimes than, than running around doing the supply missions. But when you have friends with you, that changes things. Man, long story to that. <laughs> All right, so let's resupply. So buy supplies for 75,000. So this is what I do every time 75,000 in, and then 75,000 out from the previous one. Sell stock. And we sell that to the city for 210,000. But as you guys can see, I've got a little extra. And like I said, I've had a bunch of sales lately with a little extra. Uh, a couple weeks ago, or a week ago, it started giving me the regular 140000 again, and I thought they had it fixed. But then I've had a bunch of sales again with extra. So like I said, I'm not complaining. I probably made an extra, I don't know, 50000 out of it or something. But it's uh, different lately. Okay, yeah. you're making a few drops today. Slight okay. complication is Meriwether's got your delivery schedule. Well, how'd they get Look that? Look out for them and maybe put someone on the insurgent's weapon system. Otherwise, good luck. <sighs> How do they keep getting our schedule, I tell you? <laughs> I think there's a mole somewhere, Agent 14. Better not be you. <laughs> Alright, so we might have to deal with some uh, merry weather. Oh, Got to go through my guns again. There we go. Now this mission, he says, you know, it'd be good to have a player on the gun. But as I've said before, a lot of times if I did have another friend helping me, it'd quite often give you two of these trucks. Instead of letting you share one and somebody be on the gun, you quite often have two vehicles instead, so nobody can be on the gun. It's rather frustrating that way. So we're on our way into the city. We've done this mission a bunch of times. We've got five drops. So, yeah, this is the one where we fight Meriwether five times. I think I did this earlier, helping out a friend of ours. Yeah. But it was much harder. He was doing a full bunker cell. <laughs> um, and uh, in that one, actually, I think it wasn't too bad, really, for a full bunker cell, which is like 1.1 million or something like that, um, when you sell it to the, to the faraway location, to the city. Um, but it's uh, but it was three of these trucks. so. But because it was two players, it was lots of back and forth. So if you get this mission with more, and that's the other thing, I guess I forgot to mention that, but that this is how we do it as a solo player. So the, one of the other reasons why it's one supplies in, one supplies out, is because that allows me to do it as a solo player with one vehicle. If you go over our, the value in the bunker at 175,000, it will probably give you two vehicles. And above from there, I think at 350,000, it starts giving you a new level of extra vehicles. So that's the value in the bunker, mind you, when you sell to this faraway location, to the city, you make more money than that. So, so the value is not to be confused with the payout, which isn't to be confused with the profit. <laughs> Just to be confusing, because that can be different too. If you buy all your supplies, well, the payout is not exactly all profit, right? So. So like I said, we're going to be making, oh, I don't know what it is, 220000 but it would be minus the 75000 
So we're going to be making 145,000? No, that's wrong, but close enough. Math while I'm driving. <laughs> but you guys get the idea. And I think that's a great mission. I've said before, like, the bunker's good. It won't be ready again for another two hours and 20 minutes or something like that. But, um, you know, mission to mission, comparing the card that we did earlier, I think these are better, except for this mission, actually. I should, you know, I'm getting ahead of myself. All the missions are pretty good except for this one. This one's not a bad mission, but it takes time. This one, you have to go to drops and fight. And it takes a little longer than, uh, than all the other ones. So... The other ones are, you, well, it's always nice when he says uh, we're all business today and you just get a truck like this and you drop it off in the city, you're done. That's it. That's the ideal one. <laughs> and there's other ones that are similar that are not too hard. You do three drops and then you're done. Yeah, the Marshall trucks aren't too bad either. Five drops and just two buzzards that are barely do any damage and you do, and you're done. And then there's this one. This could be a pain. Stop shooting me! Stop shooting me! We're gonna turn our backs. See if we can turn our back on them. Come on! Keep shooting. See, a lot of times I can't see them very well either, guys, but I can see that red thing moving around. <laughs> so I know that, that just below that is his head. Now, see the gang guys attacking me? This is another reason why it's a pain in the butt. Like, you're doing their drop and they attack you anyway. So even if you wait, and I've tested it in the past, even if you wait and uh, let the other guys shoot first, they still don't help you. They still shoot at you. See, so they're even coming after me. <laughs> Go away. Get your guns. I'm not going to sell to you anymore. Oh yeah, he's running away now. That's right. Go away. <laughs> we'll let him survive. He, they are the buyers after all. Alright, so you can die in this mission. I'm going to put on some more body armor. So I don't really have to do what you guys see me doing. But I'm going to do it anyway. Because I don't like to die. <laughs> this is me up. And then they tend to shoot me more while I'm unarmed and trying to get back in the vehicle. Yeah. But, you know, just so you guys know, compared to other missions, it doesn't matter if you die. You know, you can die five times, ten times. doesn't matter as long as you get the mission done before the timer. And as long as the vehicle doesn't get uh, destroyed. And they're usually fairly tough vehicles for the bunker. Okay, so another battle. Now there's a little circle on the map there. And that keeps us off the radar from other players. Those that want to know that. Shoot the gunner first. Then the driver. There we go. Well, at least these guys are finding me today, even though it's a bit of a battle. There we go. But for those who have played this, they know what I mean. Like it's uh, sometimes these AIs are not very good, and you'll have to go hunt them, hunt them down. Even though you're supposed to stay in that circle to stay off the map, I wouldn't worry about it too much, guys. You know, because sometimes you have to go hunt them down. They'll get lost in these alleyways, or get stuck somewhere, or just simply take forever to get to you. They'll go the long way around. So sometimes you're better off to go hunt them down and uh, move on to the next objective as quickly as possible. Yeah. Now, in many ways, you're already on the mission. You're already on the map anyway, if you ask me. It seems to be. It's alerting us in the bottom left corner on the map that we're already on the map anyway. It's already alerting people. So we only disappear when we're in these, these zones. So if you ask me, it's kind of a weird mission. Like, it'd be one thing if we were off the map the whole time, but I think we're only off the map when we're doing these little battles, provided you stay in that circle. So it's not really... Like, if anybody was actually trying to get you or follow you around, you know, it'd be pretty easy to see what you're up to. <laughs> You know, I don't think it would be hard to follow you, even with this hiding on the map thing. Okay, so let's see what we got now. Eventually it escalates to some buzzards, and you want to aim for the pilots. 
that saves you the trouble of fighting them all. Just shoot the pilot and the whole helicopter comes down. Oh, speaking of helicopters, might be a helicopter right now. Yep. Hopefully I'll get him. There we go. We got him. Got him. Alright. Got a bit of break. Here comes another guy. Now sometimes if you're if you're surrounded by lots of guys and they're really Oh, nice shooting. <laughs> I didn't expect to get them that good. That easy. But if you're surrounded by a lot of them, try to remember, um, you know, it's good to kill them. Good to finish them off. But sometimes just giving them a shot uh, will help. See, like, that guy's still alive. But he's not shooting at me anymore. And these guys are. So we'll come back and deal with him now. Even if he wasn't, he, he was just about to die anyway, but you guys know what I mean. As soon as you shoot them, especially when they're on foot, they'll stumble, they'll have to get back up um, if they're going to survive and come after you again. So in that moment, don't worry about finishing them off. Shoot the next guys that are that are already shooting you. And that way you'll minimize the deaths and minimize the, uh, the damage that they're doing to you. You know, if you have to go around shooting everybody in the kneecap to keep them all down, do so. <laughs> As long as they don't shoot you too much, it's worth it. B's and Q's. Oh, wrong turn. Yep, eating, talking, driving. Wrong turns. <laughs> Alright, another Merryweather fight. Now the one good thing about this particular mission is it gives you a half hour timer. For those that do the uh, gun running missions, you know that they usually um, give you only a 15 minute timer. So this one particular mission, that's one good thing about it is you have lots of time. And you can use heavier weapons too, you know, if you got them, RPGs and remote missile launchers and all that stuff. If you can find a place to take cover, You could, in theory, that's a gangster. Are you, all right? you could, in theory, call in uh, things like your Karuma and stuff. If you're quick. And uh, you're lucky enough to, to have them spawn in a spot that you can get to. You know, I say Karuma as an example, obviously. You know, whatever you guys wanted. Weaponized Dampas, you know. Insurgents. Night Sharks. Tanks. <laughs> but those are Pegasus. Ah, see, now this is a guy that's straggling. We've been battling for a while, and finally this guy arrives. No, you're too big. <laughs> Alright, let's get out of here. So watch out for those gangsters, as I was saying before, and I was um, showing you guys there, the, ga the, the ballers there, and uh, the other place, what was that? What were those gangsters? They were uh, the cartel guys. Yeah. So I think it's unfair how Rockstar does that. You're already in the middle of this. You're already battling Merriweather. Potentially, you're battling other players, too, you know. And uh, in the middle of all this, you've got to worry about gangsters and, and uh, an unofficial gang fight starting on you. And uh, it seems like it's rigged against you. It wouldn't be so bad if you could, like, wait, and they'd shoot at uh, Merriweather instead of you, because they're the first ones shooting, you know, they're the threat, but it doesn't work like that. You're always the one that they want to kill. <laughs> at least for me, you know, let me guys know if you guys know a way, but I think it's, uh, yeah. So watch out for that, because it can turn real crazy real fast. Okay, so as soon as this is done, hop up on your top of your vehicle, hold down the button to get on the gun, and again, you can always use your other stuff. Probably not the best spot for my gun to stop, or for my uh, for my truck to stop here. It's kind of hard to see. I can't even see him. I'm just hoping to catch him. I'll pull out the gun. Pull out your gun. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Whoa. Give it up! Ah! 
Wish I could see that helicopter. Nope. <laughs> That's right. You're next. Menendez is only the beginning. <laughs> Guy's stuck. Speaking of bad ass, oh, hey, stop there. Cease your activity. Oh. Citizen, oh, citizen, stop it. Oh. <laughs> Jeez. Of all the things to kill me, that. A civilian. A man. That was. That was terrible. So, like I said, this is the hardest one. And if you ask me, it's really not that hard, especially if you have friends. You know, like I said, you could die a whole bunch of times, you know, preferably not, but. <laughs> now get that out of the area. Where did that guy go? Okay. Well, I guess he decided to make like a tree and leaf. <laughs> That's right. I wonder what happened to him. Hmm. Well, he made the right choice. His life was going to be short. He was the last one of all the guys that were sent after us, so maybe he just got smart. <laughs> all right, there we go. 220,500. No high demand because we're all alone. And our supplies have just arrived. Like I said, money in and out. And I also do it like that because um, it saves me time. So one-stop shop. So I only have to go to the bunker next time I'm going to sell again. Yeah. Very cool. So like I said, you could fine-tune it for more profit. But I find that's the easiest. I don't have to go back and add more supplies or check in on how, what the value is. I just simply get that done and that's that. Looks like you sold out. To I the did. right people, too. Hmm. Only the good wars being fought with those guns. Promise. Good. Hopefully it's the war against Merriweather. <laughs> yeah, buggers. And who keeps selling them my damn delivery list? Uh. Yeah, we'll run a quick head under. And then I think, uh, let's see, what do we do? Hmm, MC stuff might be ready. I think my cash factory is in need of supplies. It might be ready. Might not. But either way it needs supplies. So I guess we'll drop by there. Oh. Usually I get them. That guy must have been. Right underneath the beam there on the roller coaster. There we go. Yeah. Can't have any escapees. No survivors. <laughs> All right. So nighttime, nighttime Saturday at four in the morning. Right, well, hopefully you guys are well. This new week, new event week. Um, I was going to say the last week of after hours, but I don't think it really is, guys. I think next week is actually the, possibly the last uh, last week of after hours. So, like I said uh, during our news, um, Black Madonna's not on the radio yet. So that would be next week that she should be back on the radio and not just in the club. So we definitely have some content uh, for next week. Plus there's the uh, vehicle, some commenters have mentioned as well, the, um, I forget what it's called, it's, uh, it's an HVY vehicle though. It's uh, related to the uh, Night Shark. And I forget what it's called, but it's, uh, it's a new vehicle that we have not gotten yet. Oh, there he is running away that way. Alright, we'll get this guy in the south before we go north. I've done head under many times, so it's usually a nice quick 20 grand. Because I know just exactly what target to go for. <laughs> and I usually don't bother too much with the police, because that just gets you three stars and, and the uh, police helicopters on you. 
Not a big deal, but if you can avoid it, it's usually better. Although sometimes right now, when I'm on one last target, I can do target practice. Yeah. And you go around, and it's good for your aim, actually. Go around shooting um, air conditioners and signs. Because as soon as you kill this last guy, your stars get cleared. So you don't even have to worry about it. There we go. Now, of course, you could always call Lester, but it's totally unnecessary. As soon as you finish the mission, you're clear of stars anyway. Yeah, so feel free to go kind of crazy on that last uh, guy if you got him locked and you're pretty confident you can get him. And then you can, you know, do all your stuff and raise your star level and then take him out and your star level's gone. Assuming you're trying to keep going and not trying to get involved in a big combat. Combat thing. Alright, so let's see. Cash factory. Counterfeit cash. Yeah, we'll check in in a little while on the uh, nightclub. So I think we're going to call in a vehicle. What do we call in? Hmm, I like my hunter. I probably should call in something like the... Uh, um, our Harrier there. The Hydra. It's a handy vehicle too. Fast and easy to land. The pyro is really good. Probably the fastest. But at the same time, you don't always have a good place to land it. Hmm. Oh, sorry guys. A little bit more coffee. The stuff of life. <laughs> oh, watch out for that gun. <laughs> that was that knock. Yeah. You can't pull any of that gear in. So there's no... No pulling in your landing gear in this one. Alright, retire out of our company. It's a good thing to not be in the companies or the MCs anyway, if you're not using them or don't have friends making money with it or off you from it. Just because it'll uh, increase your bills, so it's best not to be in it and save a little bit of money over time on the bills. And then of course the main thing is raids. Raids on your businesses, and generally they cannot happen, although I say generally because, you know, many people will tell you about glitches, and I've had them too, where uh, it's happened anyway when it shouldn't. Hey, Paige. Hey, it's Paige Harris. I work with Lester Crest. Yeah, yeah, I know. I basically run things over there while he takes credit. Hmm. Anyway, I've got a new sideline you might be interested in. Mm -hmm. High-end scores taken elegantly using the latest tech. There's a terabyte truck on Warstock hmm. I can turn into our nerve center. Get one, we'll store it under your club, and get moving on this immediately. She sounds like she's drooling for it. <laughs> yeah, she's eager. Oh, what? A page? Hey, yes, what? Paige Harris here. I, I know. You should do this. Yeah. It makes uh, sense. Yeah. Buy the terabyte truck on Warstock, we turn it into a nerve Jeez. center, and start taking scores. I've got some great ideas, okay. I just need someone to execute them. Yeah. I know, Paige. I know. Jeez. For a hacker, she's very social. <laughs> Two calls in a row. Yeah, so I'm sure you guys are used to that. She will bug you and bug you and bug you until you buy a terabyte. So, you know, no big worry for us because we're going to buy a terabyte, but I feel bad for any of you guys that may not be because uh, I don't know if she's ever going to let you be. <laughs> so let's head, in, head inside our cash counterfeiters. The cash factory, some people mainly know it as. And they do need supplies. Now, I could sell what's here right now. I probably should I think I'm just going to go up the street, and we'll see if uh, maybe something else is ready. And then we'll come back here. Later. Buy supplies. Confirm. Now the new nightclub business. It's funny, everybody always um, <laughs> tends to hate on everything at first. It's terrible. It sucks. Oh, it's great. It's the best thing ever. <laughs> anyway, that seems to be the way it's going with the nightclub. Again. So um, just so you guys know, you know, I'm doing a lot of running in and around and it's um, and making this money and it's it's still the best way of doing it. You know, I'm making great money this way. You know, there's there's debate about which uh, combinations of things and how, of course, is the best way of making money and things like that. But you can make money this way. Um, but now at the nightclub, you can actually do it very, very easy going. Like you can just ignore all your businesses and have the nightclub do all your uh, sourcing for you. Yeah, and there are various methods. I think like going into a contact mission and uh, leaving your computer like that if you guys can afford the AF gang and 
leaving it like that or the power to do so, but some people are doing things like that. And I guess in a sense, I don't know if it's cheating or not. I wouldn't really call it cheating, though, because they're playing the game. It's running, you know. It's not like they're using any kind of cheat system or anything. They're just simply running a mission and taking forever to finish it. <laughs> and in that time, your, uh, your nightclub's filling up, right? And you're avoiding bills and all kinds of stuff, right? So, and then you sell it every time you log in. So interesting various methods like that that we'll probably talk about in the future one time. Um, sometime. But uh, just something to mention to you guys that there is things like that. And the nightclub is actually a pretty profitable biz profitable business. I kind of look at it as, uh, for me, kind of like a bunker. You know, it's another thing that's building up right now while we're doing this. It's building up another cell for us. Yeah, so we'll go check in on that later. So I wonder about cocaine. Cocaine, are you ready? Of course you're not ready. Yeah, the cocaine place. I find the cocaine place, that's the one downside to it, is it takes a lot of supplies for it to uh, be ready. Yeah. Compared to something like the... Um, I should be out of my MC to avoid any problems. Compared to something like the uh, cash counterfeiters that we were just at, the cash uh, factory only takes two supplies, generally speaking, to be full. Now, it's pretty rare that you're even like that on the numbers. But nonetheless, um, it's two supplies to fill that. And uh, I can't remember how many it is for the cocaine off the top of my head, but a bunch of them, four or five or something, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of waiting. Yeah. So, supplies are en route, and more supplies are en route. So this is part of the grinding, guys, is buying supplies. It's investing. Not just getting the property, but you also got to throw supplies at it. And sometimes, I can't remember what it is, but I think I spend like... Well, over 300,000 on supplies sometimes, so that's just the way it is. And by now we could go sell another car if we wanted to. And that's what I mean about different methods are better than others, but to me you also want variety too. You know, have some fun. I like to have fun and take my time and stuff like that, have variety, try different things, use my different vehicles, you know. But at the same time, like, like I've said a few times in the past, you don't want to be making terrible money while you're doing it, you know? It's always better if you can be making good money while you're trying out different things. Yeah. I think some of you guys might know what I mean. You wander around in the game, like, to contact missions and other things, and unless there's some kind of special event, um, a lot of them are not worth it, you know? Compared to all kinds of things you could be doing. So it's always nice when you shake things up and you're still making decent money. <laughs> All right, here we are in the weed farm. Everybody's sitting around, waiting for us. Yeah, maybe we'll check in the club. Not sure if our popularity's still. Does he get a DB? I think he does, but I think it's... You know, again, there's little glitches. It's not in his hand today. But I noticed that a while ago that he had that, but there was nowhere in the game where you could actually find that. Even though there was bongs and things like that, there was no, no little doobies or anything like that. But now there is in the nightclub, for those of you that don't know. Maybe we'll have a look at that if I remember <laughs> when we get there. But and there's a little corner, um, two corners actually, um, in the upstairs area just outside your office uh, in the nightclub. And in that area you can find some seats and uh, they will have um, dupes in there. Now sometimes it changes to a cigarette too. So I'm not sure what the difference is, if it depends on your popularity or if it's just randomly changing. But sometimes uh, it'll be a doobie sitting there, which is new. Not that that's worth anything, but new stuff. And I mentioned that a while ago, because that guy has one. But we don't. And now we do. <laughs> Finally. All right, so the weed farm. Um, buy supplies. Yeah, okay. Here, has some supplies. All right, let's go sell it. 252000 Let's hope there's no mail trucks today. Ah, oh, yeah, huh? yeah, yeah, we Box are. In the back of the truck and ready to move. Woohoo. Get it to the buyer and you're done. All right. The buyer didn't show up today. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> All right. So, the fabled single truck mission. Yay. Generally considered to be the best mission. Although, when you have more than one player, I'd say the backpack mission, especially the one where it's like a race for your, uh, your MC to the drop-off point and you all have backpacks on, uh, that's probably the best mission because it's super easy. You can just jump in a helicopter together and away you go. 
and then just be nice and if you want and let whatever biker you want get the extra 10,000 or whatever by winning the race. Hey, stop that. Stop that. Stop hitting my truck. <laughs> I actually you know, I had the wrong weapon out, but worked anyway. Everything worked out. <laughs> Alright. So on this mission, it has a tiny bit of action, as you guys can see. Nothing you guys can't handle. It's uh, generally just dirt bikers, you know. They're just on dirt bikes. There he comes. And there's two of them, two riders per each one. Yeah, he's off. He might come after us. Oh, 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 I changed my view. Your fault. <laughs> But yeah, you can generally keep them behind you, and, and the, the truck gives you lots of protection, as you guys can tell. But at the same time, you can shoot back there. So it's good to keep um, your, your ass of the truck facing them, and that way, um, you know, you'll take less damage, and uh, you can still continue to shoot them in this vehicle. Now, once they're shot off the bikes, they're generally not a threat at all. So we've covered that before. You don't have to kill them. You just generally have to disable them, and that's it. You can kill them if you want to, but otherwise just keep rolling. Sometimes they'll catch up to you, like I think these guys are gonna. Or is this a new wave? They come in waves of two, and they're easily dispatched, generally speaking. Oh, I missed my turn. <laughs> that guy's crazy. Holy cow. You are one crazy driver. Look out, man. All that driving and my truck's beating them while off-roading. <laughs> Alright, I've learned to go off this way a few times on a few different missions and then go right back on the road right here. Alright. This is a rough spot. This is where I'm happy. Uh, it's not my truck. <laughs> or for long, anyway. Uh, uh, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the mechanic would be just wondering, what have you been doing to this thing? <laughs> Alright, so we don't even have to finish off those guys, the red dots on our map. He's not talking to me, thankfully. He's talking to those guys. Okay. He's yelling at those guys back there. <laughs> there we are, all done. Alright, more funding for Studio Los Santos. Yeah. Bikers fun nightclubs all the time, don't they? I think so. <laughs> and the fight will continue. And you can partake in that fight too. Maybe we should. But I gotta disband my MC as soon as I can to avoid any raids. Whoa. There we go. I was helping you out, man. <laughs> Don't know why he had to do that. Why did he have to do that? Oh, why does he keep switching? There. Not that I wanted the cool animation, although it is very cool. But I hate how it switches like that sometimes on you. Um, business. Yes, business, business. Join our business. And spawn your CO vehicles buzzer and get out of dodge quickly see that 12 on me for 12 bullets oh shoot me stop shoot me <laughs> Terror, scare tactics <laughs> all right our supplies arrived yeah, so I've had this glitch before where the bullets stay on, and sometimes you'll see the word snack and things like that will stay on you. Good news is, usually they disappear, sometimes when you pick up something else. But hopefully that'll disappear on us at some point. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> and we can go to cinematic. Oh, that works. Hey, that's work. That's a good way to get rid of it. Just go to cinematic camera. Woohoo. Oh yeah, we need to pick up some new body armor. I'm way down low, more than I normally am. All right. 
So let's see. So we checked in on the other two. Meth might be ready to go, and I think it might need some supplies too. So maybe we'll head over that way. Although, we need a different vehicle. Now I really hope that Rockstar fixes this in the future. I really do. One of my biggest complaints would be that the aircraft, your personal aircraft and your personal vehicles are separate, or the same I should say. So they take up the same spot for your character, so you can't have both out at the same time. I can't get my car and ride to my helicopter. Makes no sense to me at all. You know, it'd be nice to do some screech shots beside them, you know, things like that. But not just that, it's just simply you can't drive your car up to the airport and hop in your plane, you know, any of those things. It's either one or the other, your car or your, your plane or your helicopter. I think that's a shame and a pain. So we just had to switch up there because I'm in my company and we can't use a company uh, buzzard while we're in the uh, in the motorcycle club that we're just about to join up with. So there we go. And our supplies arrived at the cocaine lockup. Ideally you keep them going instead of running out so that they don't stop. Alright. Yeah, otherwise, this is just a leisurely day for me. A leisurely uh, making money for the terabyte. But nothing too intense. Maybe one of these days, and yeah, I agree with some, some other people have said that we'll get the uh, crate warehouse ready and we'll do everything all at once. We'll do a big thing. But unfortunately, my crate warehouse is nowhere near ready. It's got some stuff in it, but it's not ready at the moment. I should get it ready, though. Sometimes it's a good idea just to have those uh, ready or semi-ready so that uh, when, when Rockstar does the double money events, you can uh, cash in on those. Yeah, because the double money on those is really nice. So yeah, so like 4.8 million without not counting any bonuses. So that's pretty good. All right, resupply. There we go. Another 75,000 out in investment. Mm -hmm. Indeed. All right. Now they are still getting ready. Hmm. Oh, wrong, wrong menu. This menu. So I could run that right now. A lot of guys, a lot of you guys, do run it right around the halfway point or just below, and that way it generally gives you one vehicle or only two vehicles. Much easier to handle. But I'm pretty used to doing them solo, so. And sometimes I'm lazy, as I've already explained earlier, but not really lazy. Like, I've got all these businesses, so I just tend to wait and do them all at once. And in a sense, when you're doing the four main MC businesses, um, doing two cell missions turns into eight missions, right? Even though they're shorter, easier missions, it's still, I think, a little bit more time than doing four harder missions, right? And there's always the chance that you get the, uh, the single truck mission like we just got earlier. Yep. But we can do something new this time, guys. I was going to do a new episode on, um, on our first uh, counterfeit uh, cash sell. But as I've said to you guys before, all the uh, MC businesses sell missions are all the same for all the businesses. There's only one special mission, and that's for the weed farm that we were at earlier. And uh, that's where you drive the, uh, the, uh, the buyer, and he gets you... Um, uh, uh, stoned, <laughs> intoxicated, inebriated while you're driving, and that's the challenge is to avoid the cops. Oh, I'm not used to landing over here yet. It's my new business. Yeah. All right, more supplies arriving. Yeah, other than that, there's no real unique cell missions at all. Um, there is, I think, that only the cocaine place can get a certain type of raid. Um, a certain raid where you have to kill the um, uh, the the mole, I guess it would be, or the the person you, you know. There's like a transcript for the court, and you've got to take it out. So, but that's a raid, not a cell mission. Now, right across the street, there it is, the post op company, Port of Los Santos post op, the dreaded post op company. Hopefully, we do not get their dreaded post op trucks. Oh, they're so horrible. It's the only mission that I cannot do solo. 
Um, they give you three vans, but the timer is not enough time to do those slow vans. They're so slow you can run faster than them when they're uphill. <laughs> they're terrible. Even with two players, they, it, the mission can be 50-50 if you can finish it in time. So most people just cancel right away unless you have three players to help you. And this place is ready to go. All right. Now for uh, fans of the show, you guys know that I got this a little while ago. This is the not recommended business the uh, documents forgery it generally if you're buying supplies only makes about 36,000 per cell so that's after waiting like three hours for it to be ready that's after resupplying it uh, twice um, and then after that like what you guys see now even though it's going to tell you a larger amount we're actually only profiting around 36,000 now that said um, for those that watched our episode where we got this we didn't get any supplies when we bought it and maybe it was because I didn't get out of the place in time or, or leave and come back. But either way, I did get some actual um, uh, more supplies when I came back in. So when I came back later to check on it, there was uh, uh, an extra amount in there. It was kind of weird, though, because it wasn't a full supply. It was like I got a half supply bar. It's basically the value it got. Strange. Just for those that have been following the show, it's strange things lately. Strange amounts. Yeah. So let's log in and do our very first counterfeit... Uh, did I call it counterfeit cash? I hope not. Yeah, document and forgery business. Yes, the not recommended MC business. The only reason I have it is because we're going to get these decorations in our clubhouse. The only decorations I'm missing by doing the sell and by having the company. And we're going to be um, uh, do. Uh, we also bought this because uh, um, now you can source from it for the uh, nightclub. And even for the nightclub, it's the lowest value. The document forgery, which in the nightclub sourcing, it's called um, printing and copying. Um, but there is the, set, the special offers at the nightclub where you can do combinations of goods and they're random every hour. And uh, that's where having access to all the different businesses is handy so that hopefully no matter what kind of offers are there every hour, there's three per hour, you can hopefully find one that uh, you can get the, together the right supplies and sources at your nightclub to do. Okay, and those for the nightclubs uh, that, that have bought in that for the after hours nightclubs, um, you don't need um, to have any stock, you don't need to have any supplies. You can have this empty and LJ, LJT could be calling you and complaining and complaining and it wouldn't matter as long as the business is open, not shut down, you'll be able to uh, source at the nightclub. So you don't have to do this, the cells that we're doing now. I'm just doing it for the fun of it and I'm doing it for the decorations in our uh, motorcycle uh, clubhouse. So 126,000, it's out of town. Let's hope our first cell is not going to give us those terrible mail trucks. Selling. Helicopter. Huh? Okay. I don't mind helicopters. The buyer wants an airdrop. The product's loaded and waiting at the helipad. All right. Thanks, LJT. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hunter's a great vehicle. It's a tank of the sky. Um, it's a little bit bigger than it looks like. Like you can tell it's big, but when you when you fly it around, it feels like it's smaller than it is. I don't know how to explain. Maybe it's just me, but I find that I have to remember all the time that the tail's further out than I think, and that the rotor itself is bigger than I think. So a lot of times you're thinking I could fit it there. No, you can't. You need a little bit more space. A little bit more. So here's our helicopters at LSIA, and this is why I have a helicopter ready, so I can just quickly get right to it. We're still on our own. Hmm. I usually just start my own solo session. People can join in at any time. So it's a good idea to check that every now and again to keep an eye on what's going on in your session. And you don't have to do these solo. Ideally, do it with friends. I just like doing it solo sometimes. And it shows you guys if, you, if I can do it this way. It's kind of like doing it the hard way. So that, uh, you know, if anybody else tries, hopefully their way will be easier than what I'm doing. Right? I find that that's more, I learn more from seeing somebody do it the hard way, necessarily. I suppose you want to see the easy way too, you know. I don't know. All right. <laughs> Some of these things, it's a player preference. There's no real true answer. So away we go. So in this mission, we have three buzzards. For unknown reasons, they are not even armed. So no weapons. That box is way too big to be able to put inside anything else or inside one of our own buzzards. <laughs> oh, it's so awful how Rockstar never lets us do any of that stuff. Yeah. I wish they'd try harder with the story so that it made more sense, you know? But a lot of the ways they do it, it's like, that doesn't make any sense. Why can't I just take that box out? <laughs> put it in the back of a truck, put it in the back of my, uh, of my Avenger, put it in, you know, like, whatever. 
Oh well. Oh well. So, this is our first do uh, forged documents sell. And like I said, guys, not recommended. Um, the other reason I also bought it is because it's the last property for us to buy for the current time. So we bought a nightclub. We have all the other businesses. We had all the MC businesses, all the company businesses. Um, I think the only thing I can buy all the six personal properties too. You can have uh, six personal ones, like houses and things like that. So I think the only thing that I don't have um, is more crate warehouses. But I already have two of those too. But you can have up to five. But if you ask me, nobody really needs five. One is fine. If you like doing great warehouses and they are great payouts, two is good because then you can do it back to back with no cooldown timer. There we go. I did check my map, but I've forgotten already. Uh, that way and that way. Okay. Let's do that. So usually I give it a quick glance. It's good to set your GPS like I did to get you started on the closest one. Usually I try to remember, um, you know, a vague rough pattern in my head, a vague circle to fly by. So, because it's kind of hard to check your map all the time. You can, but, you know, you're flying, so it's a little dangerous. you got to be careful. And it slows you down to do that. So it's always kind of nice if you already know where you're going. You've already got an idea of the uh, pattern you're going to follow. And uh, if you have the equipment available as you finish, you call in maybe something faster um, like a like an aircraft or a pyro or something like that or your Avenger um, yeah so you'd kind of time it around the areas that it spawns in if you can help it and then you go all the way back to the uh, airport to get another one assuming you don't have any friends helping you uh, get rid of them all so up here to the crazy camp Crazy cannibals. <laughs> you always get a word of warning from LJT to not linger, because they will shoot at you. Yep. Not very often for me. Usually I just pass right over. But uh, I have found, yeah, if you do linger, yeah, they will definitely open up on you. And sometimes it's random how many of those guys um, will spawn down there. So sometimes you can take a whole bunch of ground fire real quick. <laughs> Nothing to really worry about though, but they will shoot at you. Yep. Even though we're delivering forged documents to them. And weed, and meth, and coke. <laughs> They're pretty good customers. <laughs> I guess that's why we tolerate the behavior. <laughs> Alright, so on to the last drop. Yeah, the uh, helicopter's mission, I like this one. It's easy for most people too, because most people get used to flying a buzzard uh, eventually. So, it's not a hard mission. It's easy for most people, even even uh, semi-beginner players. The only downside to it is it's a bit of a slower mission. It's not too slow. I can generally do it uh, in time, all by ourselves, as we're going to do now, hopefully. But uh, not as fast as a single truck is, that's for sure. That's definitely a much better way of going. <laughs> Much better. Woohoo! Down the mountain, down the mountain, down the mountain. Alright. I'd play with that some more, but shouldn't do that with money on board. <laughs> Just keep it safe. Yeah. Do the stunting when it doesn't really matter. Yeah, so tips are flying too. Remember to, that, speaking of obstacles, remember these obstacles are great obstacles for missiles. Somebody's chasing at you, shooting at you, you know, look for anything like that. Buildings, uh, hills, anything like that. Now, of course, yeah, it does take some practice flying to, to get good at that. But sometimes, you know, if you can see a spot like this hill, you can dodge below it and avoid incoming missiles. You know, and hopefully they'll hit the hill behind you instead of you. Or if you're using flares, if you happen to have any on the vehicle you're using, then you can also use those and and uh, get rid of more missiles behind you yep, by using the uh, obstacles and the flares in combination. Yep. Certain slow vehicles like the buzzard here, like generally an armed buzzard though, like the weaponized one, but uh, they, they can actually do that really well because they're a hovering vehicle, you can actually hug 
buildings and towers and hills and stuff like that. And so, uh, you know, somebody who's coming at you in a jet fighter and they're like blazing right by, you know, in your buzzard, you can actually hug a building and just keep going around and around, you know, keeping them on the other side. I don't know what that game would be when you're keeping somebody on the other side of the table from you. <laughs> you know? Don't let them get on the other side of you. Yeah. And wherever possible, peek your buzzard out and fire missiles back at them. <laughs> And then as you see them lining up, you know, keep your keep away from them. Keep dodging around the building. <laughs> now, I really should have landed and gotten something faster. But we're almost there now. Yeah. So we'll wait. Another thing I don't like about the uh, the aircraft is that you already have a vehicle out. That message is really annoying. So you already have an active special personal vehicle. So it won't let me spawn in something else. It won't automatically put away what I put away at last time. It's really annoying. Now if you land, you can fix that by calling in your bike and it'll automatically get rid of it. And then you return your bike to storage and then you can call in whatever. But that's a, an annoying process, really. At least it works though. And in the CEO company, you don't even have that. It's one of the advantages to the uh, MCs is that you can do that. So one thing that's really good to remember that uh, I actually forgot is to put away your vehicle into storage as you uh, before you hop in the helicopter. So I should have done that when we were here before. But that's okay. We're going to do it right now this time, and we should have enough time. So there's our Apache still out, our Hunter, FH-1 Hunter. So you have to be out of the vehicle, because Rockstar says so. <laughs> and yeah, you go into your uh, menu and then return vehicle to storage. There we go. So now, I should actually get rid of this closer one to the outside. So now I can call in another vehicle when I'm ready to, without getting that message that it says you already have a personal vehicle out. It's really annoying. All right, so we hit that one, hit that, and then we'll hit there. Okay. So kind of a pattern, and then around back to the mountain. And away we go. Still on our own. It's very strange, you know, the way it, the way it goes that way. Earlier on, um, there was people coming and going all the time. I was helping out a friend, as I mentioned, and there were so many people coming and going. You know, and I think he joined a different session and I joined up with him again. I think it was because he got the mail trucks that I was mentioning earlier, the, the dreaded post-op trucks. And, uh, you know, but now it's uh, it's quiet so far. Now, I shouldn't say that while I'm still selling. <laughs> but, and I don't really mind. You never know. Yeah. I guess you guys could say that uh, I don't worry too much. I mean, it might sound like it sometimes, but I always, uh, I guess you could say, hope for the best, plan for the worst. Yeah. So I'm always planning, you know, teaching you guys and being cautious, watching the map, watching what's going on. But I'm not really paranoid about it. It's more like, uh, you know, avoidance tactics. Yeah. Hope that makes sense. way of just keeping an eye on things so that you don't have to worry about those intense moments hopefully <laughs> but people always have a way of just sneaking up on you somehow anyway <laughs> all right another drop done continue on as we've said before one good thing about the MC cells is that uh, as we're dropping these down if something was to go all wrong we get paid for um, the drops that are made so if you do the crate missions for the CEO company, you don't. You don't. You actually have to complete the mission for yourself to be paid. So they actually recommend if things are going bad to quit and uh, deal with any punishment or hopefully none, and uh, restock your crate warehouse and then try again. Whereas the MC businesses, you might still want to do that anyway. <laughs> but that said, oh, that's a train. I was like, what was that? Um, but yeah, in the MCs, you don't have to really worry about that as much. And, and uh, oh, there we go, another drop. Yeah, and uh, you get paid for every drop that you do. 
So that's kind of a nice difference. Now the nightclubs, I have to find out about that. Not really sure what happens when things go wrong in there. But I think you you still get paid for everything that you've dropped off already. I think. But don't quote me on that because I have not tested that yet. And I haven't uh, heard of anybody doing that yet. But maybe some of you guys might have ran into it already. So, you know, if you do a nightclub cell and you've got three drops and uh, it blows up on the last drop, so you've done two, and the third one, you know, is gone, what happens? Do you, uh, yeah. And I think that you get paid for the two and just lose money on the third. But I'll have to find out. So I'm going to go around the mountain here. Probably a good time to call in our pyro. So we're going to the airport anyway. Should have waited a moment. It'll either show in on the uh, show up on the uh, the beach down there ahead of us, or behind us on the uh, Grape Seed Airport. No, oh, ahead of us. Good, closer. All right, final drop for helicopter number two. Let's pick up the pyro jet fighter. Two seater jet fighter. <laughs> All right. Away we go. And coffee while I'm hopping in. Yeah, that's one thing about being solo sometimes. Well, even if you had people helping you, a lot of times you're flying, so. It's uh, hard to take your hands off the controls when you're doing that. <laughs> As many of you guys might already know. Altitude. And just a little bit more. Helps if I'm aimed a little bit better, but that's okay. All right, so as we've said before, the uh, the game does have mm, different speeds, different air speeds. Um, if you're low to the ground, you go at different speeds than if you're high. That's kind of like real life, but it's not real life because it's the game, right? So, but similar to that though. I think once you get above, I gotta find out, I gotta remember, because I think it's over above 2,000, 3,000 feet. Um, you'll find, you'll see it on the map, that things will suddenly go faster, and it kind of zooms out a little differently, usually. And that's how you know you're at that right height, that you're just flying along. And you gain extra speed, because you're gaining extra distance faster. So you guys kind of have to you have to decide on your own whether um, whether you think it's worth it or not because you know some vehicles obviously that takes longer to get uh, the altitude and then you have to drop down like we are too. But when you're flying across the map, it can make a difference. I kill my engine here. Restart it. A little rough, but that's okay. Oh, oh, don't, no. <laughs> yeah, don't hit those. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, and return to storage. That way it's ready to spawn another one, if we need it. And now it's magically disappeared. Starting it up. Check the map, get rid of my old GPS. Okay, this one, this one's on top of the mountain actually. That one right there is on top of the mountain. Okay, let's go. Last helicopter. On our first document and forgery cell. Yeah, 
Yeah, so, so far I really like the nightclub missions. Hopefully you guys do too. Or the nightclubs, I should say, not missions. And <laughs> but the nightclub itself is actually pretty good. I think it might even be overall my favorite property. It's got a lot of stuff going on. They're not too expensive. They can be, you know, if you buy everything. But you don't need to buy everything. You know, for, uh, you know, under $2 million, you can, you know, a starting player can get themselves a, um, a decent nightclub started. You know, and it does come automatically with one parking spot and room for all your cell vehicles. So that's three parking spots for those vehicles only, though. And uh, one for your own vehicles, right? One personal vehicle. And uh, the room for the, uh, what we're going to get, the uh, terabyte. So apparently that creates its own floor automatically once you uh, buy the terabyte. Yeah, which is kind of weird, but different. Yeah. So, and the base price, all that's generally included. You can get more, and I think the uh, prices on the garages for the uh, for the nightclub to, to store all your cars there for the 30-car garage is actually uh, pretty good prices, better than the office. So, I tell people who are being money conscientious, it's better to get the garage and the nightclub first before the office one later, you know. Unless you want some cars in your office to use right from there. Maybe have a garage, a 20-car garage, instead of all three that you can get in the office. Yeah. So there's our first drop. And from here, depending on how you guys felt, you could go up the mountain. It's not that mountain, actually. It's the one way back there in the distance, though. But I'm going to go this way. It's kind of a far way, but uh, the mountain is a far way on its own because you got to go all the way up the mountain. And then you have to come down a little bit to the other places. So, mind you, coming down does give you speed. You know, you go faster going down, obviously, than you do going up. But still, I think I'm going to go this way first. And we'll go around and maybe go up the mountain last. So there's the construction yard. Be nice if uh, Rockstar ever finished that. There's a couple other places in the city too that are uh, permanently under construction, and I don't just mean the uh, the big tower there, the Mile High Club. <laughs> I don't just mean that one. Um, that's an obvious one, but there's other ones around the the, uh, the city if you look for them. Little squares filled in, uh, like with construction fence around them. So, you know, inside supposed to be buildings under construction or or uh, uh, property getting ready. But yeah, be nice if that ever happened. Now, most of us, and I agree, and I, I would think that that's not going to happen. Wishful thinking, but. Rockstar has shown us already a few times with the, over the last year with all the DLC that they can definitely change the map. They've added in our, our bunkers um, at the top, you know, the bunker tops. Inside your bunker is kind of different. It's almost like its own little instance, right? You're not on the map anymore exactly. You're in your bunker. But nonetheless, the bunkers, um, the openings are all on, on the map. So are the facilities. There's one over there somewhere. Yeah. So, And then there's Benny's with the lowriders update from a while back, you know, and that changed the alleyway. In single player, that alleyway is not like that. It's all clean. It's kind of spooky. <laughs> it's all clean and there's no uh, graffiti or anything. So, so they've, they've changed the map in a lot of different ways. Yeah. The offices too are add-ons, although they look just like the buildings from single player, but they're not quite. It seems to me anyway. Off to the mountain, Mount Juliad, the Great Mountain. Yeah, so what else can we talk about? What else can we talk about? Well, I do, um, you know, the state of GTA is always a, a common conversation piece. <laughs> people always wonder, and it's still growing. Apparently GTA has finally slowed down, and people were making a big deal that it slowed down a little bit. But, <laughs> but that's... That's like after years and years and years and years after like tremendous growth that it's finally slowed down a bit. <laughs> so I don't know if that would be seen as the end, considering that during this, this just starting to slow down, they've just broke the uh, record for those that didn't hear about that for 100 million sold copies. So that puts it as the first AAA title to beat 100 million copies. Here we go, guys. First document forgeries. Woohoo. We did it. Yay! Bye. <laughs> that view sometimes is hilarious. 
just kind of lets you go. <laughs> we'll get our hunter, and we'll get ready to disband to avoid any. There we go. To avoid any issues with the uh, MC club. And our supplies just arrived at the meth place, the meth lab. Yeah, so yeah, the first AAA title to beat 100 million copies. The only games ahead of it are uh, Minecraft and uh, Tetris. Yeah, and most people wouldn't consider those AAA titles. I don't know what you'd consider them. Maybe kind of indie games, I guess. Tetris kind of a classic game. Um, so many mobile phones and things like that that it's all around the world. So it's it's the top one in the world, I believe. And then their second place, Minecraft, and that's huge for very similar reasons. Yeah, but I wouldn't call Minecraft a AAA title. It might be these these days, but once upon a time it was just an indie game uh, created by a guy named Notch, and then later on his team and it grew and it grew and it grew into the great thing that Minecraft became. So, long story short, it's not really a AAA title in the traditional sense. So most people consider Grand Theft Auto V to be the first game to actually do that. Yep. Just crazy amounts. Yep, I think it's like something like five or six billion. I think it's actually six billion dollars in profit. Just, just crazy. Unofficially, we talked about this a while ago, unofficially some people, um, by their math, consider... Uh, uh, Grand Theft Auto V to be the most profitable uh, entertainment media product of all time to date. So it actually beats the profitability of uh, tons of movies you know. You know, Star Trek, Star Wars, all kinds of things. Uh, Game of Thrones, all these things, right? But a lot of those things, that you got to remember that's profit though. That's not sales. It's not the same thing. Profit, you know, if, if it costs me a dollar and I make a hundred and it costs you fifty dollars and you make a hundred, my profit is better because I'm making 99 and you're making 49 you know, or 50 or whatever, right? So, so profitability is not the same thing as sales. So Rockstar is really profiting. At the same time, the sales are coming in. Now for us, that's mixed bag, but it means good things. It means GTA 5 is not going anywhere. Yep. And uh, the Red Dead Redemption 2 is coming out around the corner. And Rockstar generally doesn't compete with their own games. And uh, from what I hear, Bully 2 is coming out. Some people think there's another game. So it seems almost certain we're not going to see GTA 6 until, uh, my guess would be 2022. But the earliest would be 2020. Maybe. Surprising us. So there's still lots of time. Now some people say this update or the next one at the end of the year is the last DLC for Rockstar. I disagree. I disappoint. I, I can't imagine that. They're bringing in so much money, and if it's going to be a couple years off, I'm pretty sure they're going to give us more, guys. That's what, That would be my guess. Maybe we should have checked in on the nightclub. Hmm. Oh well. We're here now. The cash for place is pretty quick. It's almost done. We'll do it. Let's hope there's no mail trucks. Let's see what we get. Some discretion here. No, we are not. The postal <laughs> service. <laughs> Got it? 